I wanted to let people know that uh, tomorrow morning on the program, I believe it's right after the our, our break that we take just at 840, but it'll be in the last segment before 9 o'clock tomorrow. We have a guest joining us, and he's a, he's a pastor of a church in Washington State. He's been a law enforcer. He was a candidate for governor on the Republican ticket at one time in Washington State. He's been a youth coach. Uh, he spent most of his uh, growing up years, uh, his formative years, in the United States and Canada. But he was born in Iran, and he was born into an Islamic family. But his family, they were opposed to the, to the new regime when Ayatollah Khomeini took over the country in the late 1970s. So they packed up and they left for the U.S. and then for a time in Canada as well. His name is Shahram Hadian, and he is going to be coming to the Twin Falls area next week. And we're going to talk more about all the details tomorrow on that. He's going to be coming to the Twin Falls area next week. Now, remember, he grew up in an Islamic culture, and his family had to flee Islamic extremists. And the Middle East and Asia and even parts of Africa have only become more extreme over the years when it comes to how they practice their Islamic faith. And that extremism is now it's permeating around the globe, through Europe and the United States, Canada, and Australia, wherever it happens to uh You've got a larger and larger Islamic footprint. And he's coming here next week. My voice is cracking there. It must be puberty all over again. He's coming here next week because he's going to be talking to a church group in Filer, but he's also doing a luncheon here in Twin Falls. And he's talking about the threat that Islam poses. Well, guess what? There's already a fellow, I think he lives in his mother's basement up in the Boise area, who's already writing about this and uh, and accusing this man of spreading hate. Look, his family had to free Iran or they'd all be dead right now. You want to talk about what real hate is? People in America have no idea what they're going through in that part. Remember, ISIS is putting people into cages, burning them to death, or putting cameras in the cages and dunking them into water so they can gleefully watch these people drown. They're throwing people off towers. They're going around and they're tying people up and strapping them into automobiles and then they blow the car up for fun because they gleefully, I guess they stand beside that and they uh, self-manipulate uh, and, and get their jollies off that way. Th- this is, this is they, there's a picture I saw online yesterday of ISIS and an entire row of crucifixes where they have crucified Christians. One of the more recent photographs from uh, lands that they currently hold. And they claim that this guy, Pastor Hadian, is somehow uh, uh, creating, uh, creating a hostile environment. You've got to be nuts if you believe that. Again, he bears witness to what's going on, and he's telling us that in this part of the world it is a serious threat. It's a threat, he is saying, in Boise, and it's a threat in Twin Falls. And he, he said so much the other day on Glenn Beck's, Beck's network. So he's coming here to talk about this and warn about this, and yet the crazies are already coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, he's being mean-spirited. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, but if we don't heed the warning now, we're going to pay for it later on. Your children and grandchildren could be those people hanging from those crucifixes. He'll join us tomorrow morning. I had, a, I had an interesting sidebar to all of this. Uh, I got an email from a, a, a listener today, a member of our audience, I should say, who says <laughs> that this guy who's writing from his mother's basement criticizing all of this is likely a plant for the Council on American Islamic Relations because they're trying to do whatever they can in a public relations perspective to portray themselves as victims. Wouldn't you do that if you wanted to get your pathogen into somebody else's culture? You wouldn't come right out and say, we're going to come, we're going to conquer you, and we're going to kill you. No, what you would do is say, oh, we're a religion of peace. And we just, that guy down in Chattanooga, you know, he was nuts. That had more to do with mental illness. That has absolutely nothing to do with, you know, we just heard the governor of Idaho on this program say that he is ordering out the National Guard in order to defend and protect military installations. That would include recruiting stations here in the state of Idaho. You know, there's a National Guard recruiting center right over in Magic Valley Mall. And I've walked by there many, many times. These people are sitting behind glass, thin glass, near a door. I'm not trying to give any kook out there any recommendations. I'm just telling you that these storefronts that they have, whether they be in strip malls or in in, in actual shopping malls, 
you know, the enclosed malls, they're all actual shopping malls. I'm just telling you right now, they are targets. If someone wants to come in and take a crack at them, they are targets. And they can't defend themselves. Yet they are, they are trained in self-defense, and they are trained to defend others. Do you know that they've discovered that the, uh, at least one, maybe two, in violation of regulations of these people at this post that was hit last week in Chattanooga were armed? And one of them did return fire, it's believed. He may have actually hit the shooter. But what those brave Marines and Sailor were, do- were doing in that situation, they all gave up their lives because guess what? They were trying to create distractions using themselves in order to, to provide an escape for other people who were in the office. Several people were able to get out a back door and scale a fence and get away. Otherwise, the carnage could have been much higher. But these brave young men put themselves in front of those bullets No greater love has a man than to give up his life for another, for a friend. I want you to remember that, and that's what they did. I don't know that, well, that's my God speaking. I don't know that the other guy's God has any such phrase. 20 minutes away from 10 o'clock. 69, Bill Colley with you. This is Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. What was it that uh, Ann Coulter said about 10 years ago? She was talking during the time of the uh, Iraqi war and the war in Afghanistan were both raging at the time. And Lefty got really upset because she said, what we really need to do is go into all of their countries, kill their leaders, and tell them that they're all going to be Christians from here on out. And everyone's, oh, you can't, oh, that's so racist and bigoted and mean. And, and, and yet, you know, that's what they would do to all of us. 944, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and NewsRadio1310.com. You can reach our show today. I like to call it the program, but show if you like. The telephone number is 736 0300. That is 736 0300. And of course, my email address, bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. That's bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. And uh, I, will, uh, I will welcome your telephone calls. Uh, I will. I don't care if you're civil or not. I, I don't buy into that business that we all have to all go around buffing each other with a powder puff. You're on the air with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310 KLIX and Top Story. Which brings me to my kind of my point. <clears throat> you know, I have a brain. You have a brain, and most of the people that, who are listening have a brain. And I have read a lot of what <clears throat> the the pros and cons of the refugee center have had to say, and I know a lot of immigrants who have uh, come to this country. I'm a third generation immigrant myself who have not only come and prospered, but have um, continued to help this country prosper. And I'm, I'm not going where you think I'm going. What I, well, uh, I hope you get there though before this weekend. Calling every, each of us, both sides, calling the other one crazies, I don't think is helping. I think that we should all calm down and encourage each other to listen to each other. I would encourage those who are pro-refugee center to go with an open, intelligent mind to this speaker who's coming next week. Now, you don't have to agree with him just because you're sitting in the audience. And I, and on the other side, I would encourage everybody who's against the Refugee Center bringing in the Syrians to open your mind calmly and intelligently. Use the brain God gave you to make an intelligent, calm, peaceful decision about this. Getting all excited and screaming, really, it doesn't help the situation, it doesn't help the conversation. Really? Because I remember what Michael Medved once said about, he said people always say, you know, that sort of approach, you know, violence never solves anything. But he said, of course, violence solved that off Hitler. I do thank you for the call. Uh, but you know what? We all light a candle, the whole world will be brighter, I guess. Uh, my feeling is on this, if, if you get an opportunity, um, you know what? I'll put it this way. I will gladly welcome them as long as after they convert, I'll go even help them put up their Christmas tree. And then we can sit down and have a ham sandwich. There were previous waves of immigrants who came here and wanted to be American. 
That's not the case with these people, at least for many of them, and that's the danger. You didn't have Italian immigrants coming here and French immigrants and German immigrants saying, oh, I can't wait until I get inculcated in, in what we're doing and then I can destroy all of this. 947, you're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Well, thanks, Bill. You kind of started off where I was headed. Uh, okay, let's think about this rationally. Bottom line is the Muslim Islams are our enemy. And there are good people in that religion. Uh, well, you know, uh, King Hussein of, our, or, yeah, of Jordan. Uh, other than him, I'm not sure who I found. Well, but my point is this. If there are moderates within that religion, they need to stand up for themselves. It is not the job of the United States to take a gamble on these people at the expense of the safety of the United States or American citizen. So until such time, I haven't heard any of these people stand up and say, oh, that radical element does not represent my point of view. Now, if you're following the Koran, then you accept the idea that it's your job to kill anybody that doesn't believe like you do. So until that changes, I don't believe that uh, we have any business importing a known element that has declared war on us. And that's that's thinking rationally, like the last caller wanted us to do. Take your emotion out of it, and they're telling you what they're going to do, and we're welcoming them, we're bringing them in here and paying them to do it to us. Yeah, uh, our tax dollars. I thank you much for giving, uh, they're giving us the rope to hang ourselves with, or is it the other way around, I guess. I'm going to tell you right now, when, when I hear all of these people telling me we've got to do this and we've got to do that and we've got to be nice to them, this is a this is a clash of cultures, and it's going to end only one way. Uh, and 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 if we want to be the, the patsies, we can go ahead and do that. I'm telling you right now, it's not a good idea. The, the fact of the matter is, if we want people to come to this country and fill the jobs that would have been filled by 70 million aborted children, we have a lot of other choices around the world. We don't necessarily need to take that choice. I just, I just, I'm, I'm flummoxed by this. Plus, how many of these people actually stood up after the shooting last week and said they condemned that behavior? You know, a lot of them deep down in were saying, oh, the American military deserved it. I, 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 I sorry, I, 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 I don't see any concerted effort on the part of these people to come out and say, if a Christian did that, you know what would be the reaction from media and the rest of the world? By the way, Mike Gallagher coming up, brought to you by the Financial Advisors, exclusively at Waddell and Reed in Twin Falls, 736-6563. 70 right now, 954. Bill Cowley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. You can reach our program today by dialing 736-0300. We've been talking about the appearance next week of uh, Pastor Sharam Hattie and who's coming to speak in the Twin Falls area and also will be having a luncheon in fact, I think some of the local political leaders are invited to that. We'll see who shows up. Uh, my guess is it's going to be a little bit dicey in that situation. So I'll get to my telephone callers in just a moment. Speaking of people coming to this country, though, I just saw this headline. This comes from PJ Media. In Texas, the Department of Public Safety, since Obama took office January 20th, 2009, is tracking crimes committed by illegal aliens in this country. 611,234 crimes. So well over half a million. 2,993 homicides, just seven short of 3,000. Something to consider as you allow your country to be overrun. 955, you're on the air on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX. What's on your mind? Yes, uh, regarding the lady that just spoke about keeping calm and collected, my blood is boiling, and I'm going to start to stay as calm and collected as I can. I am also a third generation uh, from an immigrant and... My grandfather came to this country. Every single one of my uncles served in the military. I don't know how many of my cousins did, but I served in the military. They are trying to change the oath so that they don't have to when they come to this country any longer serve in our military. To I heard this our yesterday, country. yeah. And, you know, you mentioned some of the other statistics about the, these people that are coming to this country and, and violating our laws and c consistently. Um, it, it really upsets me. Uh, she says that these people are are integrating. They're not. Uh, Michigan, Texas, uh, other countries, these people are not integrating into the countries that they're moving into. 
and that's the big problem I have with all this. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and when it comes to the illegal immigrants crossing our southern border, that's part of the, they call it Reconquista, taking that land back that they feel they lost in 18, what was it, 1848, 49. And then when it comes to uh, the others, it's all about dimitude and uh, turning this into an Islamic republic. And I guess we'll just be caught in the middle between the two. 956, you're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on News Radio 1310.com. I'd like to offer a different perspective on the whole um, the whole issue. People don't trust our government. That's the real root of the problem. Why would we trust our government to, to vet these people before they bring them in here? The president we have currently doesn't care about the law, much less protecting us from... I, I think he is definitely one of those radicals. He's a plant himself. Thank you for the call. He's actually on his way to visit his home country, his birthplace. <clears throat> <laughs> 957. Uh, by the way, God willing, the creek don't rise. They will let me do this again tomorrow. Some days I wonder. Rush Limbaugh coming up in just a short while following 10 o'clock news on Fox. And you're on the air. You may have the last word today. Yes, hello? Yeah, you're on the air. Yes, I was just, uh, I want to make a comment. I heard on the news, I believe it was yesterday, uh, KMBT, they were talking about six police dogs that had died from heat exhaustion in their car. And I was just kind of curious, it seems like uh, when if somebody hurts one of those dogs, they're considered like a police officer. So I wonder if these officers that were in control of these dogs should be prosecuted for, you know, assault at minimum and maybe even uh, murder of another police officer. I guess it's open line uh, Thursday. Uh, let's uh, all jump on board and denigrate the police. Thank you much for the call. I guess he couldn't defend any other liberal cause today. <laughs> well, you know, just... <clears throat> Throw that out there. 9.58. Hey, look, also Rush Limbaugh coming up for the next three hours, followed by Sean Hannity following Fox News at 1 o'clock. Glenn Beck's program. Beck should be back maybe in a week or two, arresting his vocal cords. Uh, That's coming up just after 4 o'clock. And Dave Ramsey tonight, and of course during the overnight, Coast to Coast with George Norrie. Look forward to tomorrow. And in fact, as I mentioned earlier, Pastor Hadi is scheduled to join us. Uh, If you'd like to get some details on his appearances, he'll be telling us all about it, and he'll be issuing his warning as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.